here together with David Weinberger at the Dresdner Zukunftsforum. You are, uh, you are one of our keynote speakers of today and you were talking about unsettling knowledge today in your keynote. Can you give us a brief wrap up of your keynote? Knowledge is moving into networks, out of books and libraries and into networks. It's taking on the properties of those networks, which are internet networks, so that they are loose and they're unsettled and they're in constant disagreement um, and they are uh, connected and super abundant. It's a very different idea of knowledge than what we used to have, which was it was what we agreed upon, what made it through the filters and got put on the, the shelves of the, of the library. So the, the challenge for the knowledge worker is to understand uh, or perceive knowledge as a network and get used to it and know how to work with it. Is that right? Because normally now we are working with filtering. And what is the difference in, in the, the approach of managing knowledge? Between filtering and, and the knowledge network? Yeah. Uh, the two things go hand in hand. They can. but. Um, I suppose at the extreme, if all you did was filter, you use, say, algorithmic filters, you would be hoping to get the information that is right and that you need and then rely upon it, which is uh, sort of an old idea of how knowledge works, except that you're now relying upon algorithms, which may be not quite as reliable as the old way that we did it, which was to go ask a librarian or an expert in the field. Um, so the difference, uh, filtering is a mechanism by which you reduce the amount of material you have to consider. But knowledge networks are different. It's a set of people who are connected, who um, connect, build links among pieces on the web, discuss them, evaluate them, uh, make sense of them, argue about them. Um, that is a type of filter. It's, uh, on the one hand, um, from a knowledge network, you may get recommendations of things to read, and these can be very reliable recommendations. So uh, a group of people that you've been engaged with over the course of months or years about some topic, and somebody says, oh, there's a new book out or a new post by, and it's, uh, it's great, or you should read it, but there's a problem with it, that's probably a pretty good recommendation. So in that case, the knowledge network is doing not just some filtering, but they're doing some filtering and they are contextualizing. And that's a very good use for knowledge networks. So if we try to break it down towards a um, technical or technology, uh, technological uh, solutions, would it be, an, and if we discuss it towards a knowledge network for an enterprise, so would it be uh, enterprise social networks with, uh, where you have also the possibilities of tagging all the posts so you can really inter you can really relate and build up the context of the posts? Yes, that's one very important thing to do. Um, it, I think usually it's a mistake to think that a knowledge network is only about knowledge. A knowledge network stays together because the people enjoy talking with one another. It's inevitably also a social network. Um, and a social network uh, can easily turn out to be a knowledge network as soon as the right question is asked of it. Um, those two things are not separate. They are, in fact, the same thing. OK, so, but, but still, the, the, the future uh, knowledge infrastructure is uh, an advanced enterprise social networking solution within the organization. So, um, so I'm not sure there is a single knowledge network infrastructure. It um, depends what sort of knowledge. I, we humans, we humans learn all the time, and so we're constantly uh, in and out of various sorts of networks. But I think that it's um, a very positive step for an organization to think about building um, a platform, a platform that offers uh, particular services that enable people to join together intelligently um, as well as socially, that has access to particular resources inside the organization and out, maybe does some of the filtering as well, um, allows people to do their own filtering and push it through the, the platform, um, and quite conceivably also provides uh, resources so that developers can develop applications that work against this platform. And that platform, which allows all of these different sorts of things to happen, um, all these different sorts of networks to emerge, 
and have access to the information and data that they need, that platform is a tremendously valuable thing for an organization. Okay, great. Thank you for your answers.